Well, hello everyone at the .NET conference. So happy to be here with you today. We are talking about boosting your .NET productivity with low code tools. So Carolina and I are gonna take turns chatting with you. So a big welcome. And again, thank you to our hosts and uh, thank you to everyone um, who has been on this. I, there's just massive numbers and it's just so great to see everybody here. So right on. So um, we're really excited about being here. My name is Heather Cook Newman. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. Um, I'm a uh, Power Platform and Dynamics 365 customer and community success lead here at Microsoft. I'm on the BAP team, so in Charles Amana's organization, and uh, I pretty much think about all day how to build programs at scale for our community, for our makers and our users and all that kind of jazz. I live in Los Angeles, California, is where I'm coming uh, to you uh, today from here, and I'm originally from Michigan. I'm in the Mitten State, um, and I spent time in Seattle at the University of Washington, and I was a theater major. And um, <laughs> yeah, jazz hands, everybody, jazz hands. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I've been in around Microsoft for about 21 years. I've been back um, uh, as a full-time employee the last two and a half. Thrilled to be back um, and very excited to work with folks like Carolina, um, who has been an amazing partner uh, for me for many years when I was in the community as a Microsoft MVP and now back here at Microsoft. So, Carolina. Oh, also, we have our LinkedIn QR codes on yes. our slides. And so if you have a camera or a smartphone and want to do a quick snap of that QR code, then we're connected on LinkedIn forever and ever and ever. So <laughs> I will make the slides go for yours, Carawana. Excellent. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Carawana Gatimu, Microsoft Teams Engineering. I run the customer advocacy group. My pronouns are she and her. And um, much like Heather, I do community at scale. My team also delivers a lot of uh, engineering solutions around Teams templates, the Teams Emergency Operations Center, adoption.microsoft.com, and more. So, yes, snap that QR code, visit my YouTube channel. Uh, but let's go ahead and just hop in. You want to yeah. know more about us? You can always find us out there on the wire. Absolutely. So, you know, um, our jobs revolve around these three big items here on, on the list. And for me, you know, my story is very similar to many in the world where I'm, I've been pivoting, learning and upskilling around the way, uh, around the way. And that theater background that I was talking to you about makes it so that I give a lot of keynotes and speak to students, mentoring, all of that kind of thing. Very passionate about women, people of color and students and allies who are looking to do that career switch or who want to bring more value to their jobs every day. So every day we're talking digital literacy, digital equity, how do we bring these programs to scale and get people prepped for what's to come. And I think that's where a lot of you are thinking about what is to come from where we are today into the future. I know, Carolina, you you have such passion around this as well. Do you want to say anything to this slide as well? I do. I, I think that uh, you're going to learn a lot about and deep dive into the technology capabilities that are available to you. But Heather and I want you to put that in the context of your broader career. Um, we both feel really strongly that if you're not enjoying what you're doing right now, then now's the time to make a change. Um, and we have so many programs and capabilities that are coming between the low code work that we're going to talk about, the collaborative apps, but also the metaverse that comes, that now is a time to really lean into, you know, by attending conferences like this and, and uh, taking online skilling and what have you uh, to really boost your career. So, you know, Heather and I are both products of the community. Um, I know we both believe that we wouldn't have the jobs we have if it wasn't for uh, what community conferences like this can do. And I think it's important for us to also reach out and help others who are coming along. Many of you have been around the Microsoft ecosystem a long time and you probably understand it well, but it's changing. And so now is the time where you can leverage community and the new technology to make sure that you're positioning yourself for the future uh, and being able to help others along the way. Yeah, so a lot of this content came from a lot of blogs from our colleagues from the Work Trends Report. And so you'll see a lot of statistics and data from that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit today about innovations around low code, um, where I live and breathe every day, uh, the infusion of AI, automation of business processes, collaborative apps, metaverse, like Carolina was saying as well. So, and a little bit about where we see the tech industry going. Um, these slides have been around a little bit, but they're very important. There are some waves of change in development that have been happening, and um, it's changing the way we work and how we develop, how all of you develop. Um, the first wave is really about the changing workforce. 35% of the workforce are millennials. 
um, folks are graduating who have our, you know, the iPhones in their hands um, at the age of five now. Um, and so everyone's expecting that mobile first class experience environment, not just on our smartphones, but in the workplace. And it's not really just millennials, um, it's all business cases. And uh, digital demand, because our workforce will soon be millennials, and you can see the numbers there on Gen Z. Uh, similar, wave two. Um, this just changed. It was 500 million. It's now 750 million apps, applications will be created in the next five years than in the last 40. Wow, right? Mm. That's huge. That is so much. That is so much to, to, to think about. And to add one thing there, is your app going to be part of the ones of that 750 million apps that people love to use? that continues to live through the life cycle. It's really important that it's not just about the numbers, but it's also about the quality of the kind of development that you're doing. Um, and that's where we hope we can help you a little bit today. Absolutely. And I think it's it's professional developers. I, some people have a bad taste in their mouth when you start taking the word developer and say citizen or pro or maker and all of that. And frankly, we're talking to everybody. You know, we're talking to all of you who are our, our professional developers, of course, and you're awesome at what you do. And you, and there's also all of these new low code tools that are really exciting that are upskilling folks who maybe are in a marketing department or an HR department or doing other things that are um, helping contribute to the development process. And hopefully low code tools are also helping professional developers go faster right? Which is really exciting as well. And it closes that app gap that we uh, are talking about for sure. Um, I think this is another, uh, this went from 1 million to 4 million uh, very recently. So there's a 4 million developer shortfall. Um, more than 80% of users and potential users of the low code and no code platforms um, say that they are willing to work for a company that invests in their technical upskilling. So if you're working at a company that's not helping you do that, People are looking for new jobs um, and places that will do that. So to fill that developer shortfall. Um, what is that? Um, what is the answer to this? It's not necessarily teach everybody to code, right? Um, I think, you know, Carolina, you and I have talked about it before. We'd love to potentially be plugged into the matrix with not, without all the weird stuff so that we could, you know, be learned faster, right? Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love that. I, I have no problem with that as long as it has an off switch. <laughs> um, Privacy <laughs> slider, something like that is yeah. what I would like. But yes, exactly. to the matrix. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I mean, you're a solution architect. You, that was part of the background of, of you um, in the community, right? Um, but your prior job. So that's part of your DNA. Yeah. Yes, it, it is. But at the same time, it's not my favorite thing to do. So I differentiate between a cloud solution architect who lives and breathes in that code and has a, um, you know, a very deep technical background. I have a deep technical background, but I am a business solution architect. I prefer to listen to customers, assemble building blocks and use low code solutions and out of the box capabilities whenever possible to solve a customer's problem. And I think that you know, this speaks to what you're saying about the diversity of people who do this. Can I code? Yes, I can. Am I fast anymore? No, I'm not. Uh, but but it's also not what sings to me. So it, it's important to understand what makes you uh, feel like you're getting meaning from your work as you are addressing these industry trends and issues. The bottom line is we're in demand. People who can navigate this ecosystem, leverage all the tools that are available and solve business problems are going to be well employed uh, over the next decade. And so yeah. you're positioning yourself really well by being here right now to build that skill set. Absolutely. You know, it's one of those things where I come from a consulting background, owning my own business, mm -hmm. all of that. Right. So I'm I was continuously looking to how, how do I build for people? How do we get new marketing solutions in there? How do we make sure that we're solving the problems every day for folks? And that is the life of so many of you who are consultants as well, who don't work for those larger companies. Right. So this is the place to be. It's an exciting, exciting time. Um, what is the answer? right? Um, well, low code, AI, metaverse, hybrid meetings, all of these things um, from the work trends index. And if you don't know what that is, that Microsoft, we're the biggest lab out there. And so there's lots of information from the work trends index. You can type that in right now and go check it out. Um, but the 85% have positive impact on work satisfaction from using all of these new tools because people love learning, right? And so, and there's, they're very user-friendly. 
right? So they're a more user-friendly model than we've seen in the past. And so that upskilling experience has a positive uptick on satisfaction and morale by users. Those are data points that's not me just spouting it off, but that's coming from our work trends index. It's really exciting. And One so other... Yeah, I'm okay. sorry, Heather, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, one other thing I just wanted to say, these stats may not land with you right now, or maybe you don't think they're super relevant, but they're very relevant when you're trying to make the business case for the funding for your next app, yeah. right? Or for your next development project, right? These mm -hmm. pieces of information validated by Microsoft Research can help you move forward your next project. So that's one of the reasons we wanna share them with you is so that you're armed with this information as you're trying to get your next project off the ground or take it from an experiment into a production application, you know, which always requires additional work. Absolutely. And you know, people, we want to instill confidence in each other, right? And so from, whether you're from a traditional software background or not, to see the value of your work contributing to your team's success is huge, right? Happy people are productive people. Productive people help drive more revenue, right? That's, the, that's that uh, wonderful combination right there. So some paradigm shift that's coming up um, and with artificial intelligence and AI. Um, so this is also obviously fueling um, innovation and technology, and it's allowing all of you to build software solutions using the same language when people talk to each other, like we're talking to each other right now, right? So natural language translate, translated into programming language, and that paradigm shift is being driven by Codex. Most of you probably know what Codex is, but if you don't, it's a machine learning model from the AI company OpenAI uh, out of San Francisco that translates natural language commands in, into a dozen programming languages. So Get this, she was talking about this. Hello, Python, da 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 da, C sharp, da 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 da. You know, like that's amazing of that's where we are right now. And that all, that codex really descended from the GPT-3, uh, sounds like a robot, but uh, it kind of is, right? Uh, generative pre-trained transformer. Um, and it's an autoregressive language model that turns that uses deep learning um, to produce that human-like text. So once you give it a prompt, uh, it produces the text that continues that prompt, right? And so all that learning for GTP3 actually came from language data from the internet. So from everybody on this call and beyond, plus learning code from GitHub and other repositories. So you put all of the language on the internet and how we talk and how we speak and then all the code together, here we go, artificial intelligence AI. <laughs> And if all of that was just a bunch of wah, 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 because you might be new here, it matters because this creates an accessible portal for people to speak what is needed and not have to uh, work as hard at some of the you know things that have uh, been the bane of our coding existence forever. Where's the comma? Where's the semicolon? Are you a, a tabs or a spaces person? You know, this right. sort of thing. And so yep. being able to have a different sort of interface to unleash your creativity as a developer is what this is about. Right. I love going deep into what this all means and and super yeah. impressed, Heather, by your uh, overview of that. I don't think I could have done that that well. It was really good. But I also want to connect that to yeah. why this matters to you, especially if you're new here. Right. Absolutely. This is a really this is important stuff moving forward. Yeah. And it's it's somebody new to me, too. And I was like, but I was like, I, I went deep into this because I was like, I want to know what this is about, you know. And so I think it is the marriage of what you're talking about. How, how do we make this real? And then where does this thing come from? You know, yeah. We often don't get the origin story sometimes on these things, and we just go next. But anyway, um, I think you know, I think there's really a call to invest in employee development, um, and low code um, really does empower everyone. We've got you know business users, IT pros. Um, pro developers, and you know, we at Microsoft are definitely talking about fusion teams, which is you know these three together in the trifecta or triad, if you want, um, of bringing people together to work on these things and to build new apps and to solve business problems together. And so the thing is, is that those you know leaders and and business decision makers out there, those of you who own businesses, you really gotta you know critically examine um, the opportunities that are there for offering your employees. Um, an opportunity, one, to start working together more. Look at your IT teams, look at your business analysts, look at your developers. Do they talk to each other? I was at a business one time where the support team and my marketing team had never talked. And this is this was way back and we were in person in an office. I won't say where, but I said, everybody get up. We got up and we walked over to the support team and I had the marketing and support team meet because they'd never met. Now, these days it's harder to do that, but it is up to leaders of business to be bringing teams together to work on these solutions together. And that's all about meaningful opportunities for 
career advancement, networking, because the, ne the person next to you is probably the person or the next to you on the call can help you with what you're doing next and next and next in your careers. So anyway, that's what I have to say about that slide. So <laughs> exciting. So Power Apps. So we'll talk about Power Apps for a second. Um, you know, we're creating software applications like Power Apps to make that app development even easier and faster for those fusion development teams, right? So that's that combination I was talking about. Um, and uh, also the capability to develop all the custom connectors with Microsoft Power Platform on the back end. Just one piece that I was really excited about that has been announced recently was, um, you know, natural language and express design. So developers, citizens, um, you know, professionals can create low code faster with this. This leverages a lot of that fun stuff that I was just talking about with AI. It's it's cognitive services, it's detection models. So, you know, those of you who uh, use Figma for your design, which is one of the leading, you know, UI UX design tools uh, recently bought by Adobe, um, you can just upload a Figma design file. Um, I was in front of a college uh, last week and, and they were looked at me when I said Figma, they were like, huh? And I said, how about a PDF? And they were like, oh yeah, yeah I have those. So PDFs, uh, PowerPoints, um, paper, a screenshot of a legacy user interface, even a picture of a hand-drawn app can now be converted by Power Apps into a working Power App within seconds, right? With a connected data schema. So these kind of innovations are what makes it so, you know, a developer can go faster, a non-traditional developer can take these new new low codes and, and, and make apps almost instantly. And this, y'all, is the trend for the next couple of decades that's coming out. So I was really excited about this power. There's a million things that are happening in Power Apps and you can check that out on the Power Apps blog or in our community, but this was one I wanted to point out to everybody. So we wanna talk about Teams a little bit. Carolina, you wanna talk about Teams and hybrid work? Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to. You know, um, working in the collaborative apps and platform organization under Jeff Teeper is an exciting place to be. Um, you know, it's we've released 450 new features just in the last year, these 270 million users. Of course, that was tremendous growth almost overnight because of the pandemic, but we're seeing that growth stabilize and be retained because people are understanding the, the power of bringing folks together in an organization. Uh, in a more uh, modern centralized interface. And so Microsoft Teams is that center of gravity for the productivity experience. But when it really becomes powerful is when it's the center for uh, app experiences, whether, uh, you know, developed in a, this wonderful kind of fast way um, that Heather was just outlining or custom developed apps. Teams is better when people have more of a reason to go there, more than chat and having a video call. Those are great capabilities. I use them every day, of course, and I love them. But what is really powerful about Teams is bringing in those app experiences um, and as you think about really transforming uh, business processes in general. And if we go ahead and click to the next one, you know, a big piece of that is thinking about these immersive experiences. So the expectations of the new workforce, of the changing workforce, is something that we have to think about, right? And so, you know, people who are digital natives, who had that cell phone in their hand, that iPhone in their hand uh, since they were five, uh, expect to have a different sort and a more integrated productivity experience in their workplace, right? And the metaverse is going to help further transform this uh, over time. When we talk about the metaverse, we talk about um, you know, your portable avatar, uh, being able to dynamically create different sorts of avatars for different sorts of experiences. I used mine this morning in a presentation about the metaverse uh, with an innovation company from France. And it was the one that has a nicer jacket on, um, you know, than the one that I have for my, my team meetings. Those avatars are going to be portable and they'll be able to interact with not only each other, but the environments that are created in the immersive meeting experiences. Um, to get an overview of that, you can go and take a look at our Ignite uh, sessions and what have you. But from a developer perspective, what matters is if you, again, want to transform your career, um, certainly we are going to need more developer staff and creative talent to build these immersive worlds, right? Uh, the Unity uh, 3D gaming engine is a big piece of what's coming and what we're standardizing on. Uh, and so it's, it's very important to be thinking about this as we go forward. In the next graphic, we're just really showing um, you know, the power of those connected experiences. So we all know, right, we're going to have a lot more apps and a lot more connected experiences. That's the end of the day. And that's the opportunity that's here 
But again, I caution you, many organizations are diving into low code and to custom development and to collaborative apps and experiences. And I we appreciate that at Microsoft, but we want quality experiences. We want you to think about the user interface. We want you to think about data governance. We want you to think about making sure that your app experience is accessible and can be trusted and has good best practices. And that's why learning and modernizing your development best practices is so essential. Like some of us enjoy learning. Some of us are a little bit tired of learning something new every day. That would probably be me, um, just because it can be very overwhelming, right? But it is very important to modernize these practices as we think about uh, the next, what's coming next. And um, building these apps with the Microsoft Cloud is also important because as we think about the graph and all of the data from Microsoft 365 application experiences living in the graph, it allows us to expand the capabilities, the business process improvement, the decision making that can be done. And you can sit down um, as a professional developer, even with just a, you know, a simple business analyst and say, you know, give me an example of your process that needs to be improved. Sketch it out on a piece of paper or in a PowerPoint slide and then go. And this idea of agile development, right? Agile doesn't mean, you know, badgel, you know, which is poor requirements and not enough user feedback. It means that you can quickly develop and iterate an experience, uh, and especially in a collaborative way, but especially with the new tools around fusion development, you can co-collaborate on that code together, um, leveraging the power of uh, the graph and all of the other components, Azure data, the dataverse, and all the data that comes from our user experiences into evolving that experience very quickly. And that's what we encourage because most organizations don't have the sorts of budgets that can be sunk into these very long, very expensive custom development projects. People expect faster results now. Uh, they expect more polished experiences and they expect it with less uh, you know, hours uh, of investment there. So it's yeah. important to, to think that through as you're doing that. And then, I think, uh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, you no, know, the co-authoring that's a, that was new. That was just announced also with for Power Apps as well. That was another big feature of that finally getting that co-authoring in there, so you can be in there at the same time, right? Absolutely. And if you, I know we're yeah, we're going to continue to develop capabilities and APIs and feature sets that will allow you to meet users in the flow of work, right? Bringing your app into Teams um, and also having other mobile experiences and web experiences is an inclusive act. And that way you're also, by developing in this ecosystem, getting the benefits of the accessibility and compliance and security capabilities that are already built in to the Microsoft Cloud, right? You don't have to come up with a governance model or an app deployment model from scratch, it's already built into the team's ecosystem with our upgraded app store and more. And so we are a platform. I know many people think of Microsoft Teams as the end user experience, but we think of ourselves as a platform for you to build upon. Uh, and so the creativity and opportunity is endless. Um, and I think when we think about those collaborative apps, um, you know, it becomes really important, uh, you know, to to focus on the fact that we are transforming the people experience with better ubiquitous but governed control and access to data so that the process itself can be improved, right? This is the ecosystem that we have to operate in now when we start to think about app development. And I love this quote, this quote from Satya. I, I really want to make sure that we get to show this because, yeah. Everything I do as a business solution architect, everything I think about, and Heather and I think about um, as uh, you know, customer advocates and community success people, is about ensuring that employees are thriving in organizations. Right, that is the differentiator um, competitively from a career perspective, from a human satisfaction perspective, uh, that makes all the difference. And it is all about this people first strategy that has led us to having a new frame of reference for the way that we approach development, the way that we approach solution design and identify opportunities. And it really hinges on that last column there, which is about feedback. If you're doing development work right now and you don't have an established way to get feedback from your users in a structured manner, 
I would suggest you're missing something, right? Some of the best innovation comes from employees uh, who are closest to the processes you're trying to improve. Uh, and so this is very important when you think about collaborative apps. I think it's important in general, but certainly in the collaborative app space, feedback from stakeholders, uh, end users, and the people you're trying to serve uh, is super important. And especially if you skip two slides to the scenarios, Heather, yep. I really want everyone to, to think about how collaborative apps and uh, ultimately the metaverse is going to transform these types of scenarios, right? Operational scenarios, understanding by the use of analytics and, and digital twins, the kinds of uh, production or manufacturing line uh, changes that can be made. We think about the industrial metaverse at Microsoft and the data and AI and low code access uh, and collaborative apps that are going to express themselves inside the three dimensional immersive meeting space is what's up. Is yep, absolutely. And I think one of the things that uh, came out a lot about flexibility, right? Being flexible, um, having opportunities for people to grow, to change, to learn, to bring in some of these new ideas. Flexibility is a feature these days. It's not a fad, right? And all of these low-code solutions and other things that we're talking about, um, leaders who are not changing, um, 2019 leadership practices are not going to meet the moment. For <laughs> <all> <laughs> no! <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Bad idea. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. So positive business outcomes depend on positive people outcomes. And if nothing else, leaving you with that about flexibility is a feature, not a fad. Remember that as you're looking for the new opportunity that you have and when you're giving opportunities as a leader, both. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. And I think we're at our time for questions, aren't we? I think we are. Yeah. And I'll put the, a couple of calls to action up there. Um, if you'd like to join the conversation for Microsoft Community, follow Adoption and Community Twitter handle that uh, Carowana and I and the team all work on together. And any questions, please let us know. Uh, but just make sure that you, you know, we're happy to answer your questions. And this community, this space, this revolution is open to everyone. There is room for everyone at this table. Uh, and, and I really want to, both Heather and I want to encourage you, um, you know, take a look at your career. Make sure you're finding meaning in your work. Um, if you don't feel included, then join our community to get to, to feel like you are. I mean, the .NET conference community is an amazing place. I just want everyone to know that, you know, across Microsoft, you are welcome and so are your ideas. And so we're really, um, really happy to get to be here.